its gender. Oh, wait, we're live. Okay, so, <laughs> welcome to State of Exile, episode 38, with Carve and Gazzy. Hell yeah, thanks for coming, guys. Thank you for, uh, thanks for having us. Oh, we yes. <laughs> oh, man, that was so smooth. Such Nandy. a smooth intro. Love it. Perfect. All right. We may have coached them a little. <laughs> <laughs> I felt threatened earlier. <laughs> Scripted podcast confirmed. Anyways, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> today we're going to be discussing some unique drop, um, the unique drop rates, uh, especially the very, very rare ones that have been recently buffed. We'll be dis discussing that if we've noticed anything. Um, there's a one month race coming up. Uh, hardcore in general and racing with Carve. Carve here is a very good racer and he's reached the top 50, I believe, twice this league. Yeah, yeah, you have. Don't deny it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs> And then uh, Gazzy's going to talk to us about his cool, edgy hipster build that just died this morning. Real. <laughs> and of course, as always, we got the Q&A. So at this point in time, if you guys have any questions, uh, please type at Ziggy D Live. He'll save them and we'll ask them at the end of the podcast. So any point in time over the next two hours, feel free to post some questions. So let's kick things off. What's everyone been up to, right? That's usually what we do now. Well, we got the hipster build discussion. Let's do it, Gazzy. Let's hear it. <laughs> Well, the hipster build discussion, uh, basically, uh, I finished what I believe is to have done all the hard parts in the game for Summoners. As many of you guys already know, I've exclusively played Summoners one and a half years in this game, and I launched the kill of Uber Siri as a classic Summoner, not using Raiding Spirits, and uh, got the world first kill on it. I don't think anyone has ever done it, uh, even after the kill. And it was hard. <laughs> it was very hard. So moving on from that, I started creating, or deciding to play niche, really, really niche, or uncommon, or rarely seen builds before. And uh, we started voting for this, and the vote landed on playing a cold damage build, which converted the damage into fire damage, and then converted that fire damage into chaos damage. Now, this might seem really bad, which, which it is, just keep that in mind, it is not good, but good. it's fun. It's really fun. First ever. Is, are, are you sure you're the first ever in the world to do this? Like, have you actually done the research, Gazi? No, not for that build, but for Uber Siri as a classic summoner, yes. Okay. No one has the gear that can do it but me at the moment, I believe. <laughs> in standard, at least. Tell, I, uh, tell us more about this, Gazi. Surviving one shots. <laughs> why, why is that hard for non-summoner bros? Not many people play summoners. What's, uh, why, why is that such a difficult feat? to have done. The uh, classic summoner, like Raiding Spirits AI is completely different to how classic minion AI is working. Uh, basically you summon Raiding Spirit and they run for the hard, closest nearby in line of sight enemy and they start attacking. And that's, that's how they work and when it's dead they move on to the next target. Whilst classic minions is, you're, you're actually forced to control them and you have about a tenth or a twentieth of the Raiding Spirit's damage. So it's really hard to control. And both type of extreme high high damaging summoner builds renders your character extremely low on defensive stats. So basically, I have a ton of energy shield, and that's it. I don't have any leeches, don't have any flasks. I have a Val discipline if I have room for it, which you barely almost never have. Um, but the main problem is positioning and knowing what the hell you're doing, and it requires quite a lot of you know, not only practice but uh, experience with how your minions react to different spells and how they move uh, where you're standing. And even with experience, that's not guaranteeing success. I think I've done about 20 or 15 of 20 Uber runs as a classic summoner. 15 of them was successful. 14, 14, 15 in total. I've done some off stream as well. And um, that, that's really about it. It's, it's just controlling them and uh, making them survive. If a specter mm. dies, you cannot resummon the specter without leaving the area. Uh, but the biggest problem has actually been the trio boss. If you kill the incorrect targets, you fuck the map up. You will never be able to do it. If you leave the last one alive, that is the incorrect one, so to say. And, and since you don't have, have like full control, and usually yeah. you're just like controlling just yourself to dodge things, whereas with summoners you have to control the little minions at the same time as well. I can't yeah, imagine. Exactly. But the biggest problem has been the trio boss. I mean, you have to kill Eli, the, the ranger, first. If you don't kill her, she can one-shot you and your minions with one ring of arrows. If she's left, that's the second or last. So it's impossible to leave her up. Problem is killing the correct out of two melee targeting enemies that are both really fast. So you have to somewhat separate them to kill the correct one. And uh, even mm -hmm. after that, in the, for those of you who don't know, we leave the, um, the flame striker last. 
leaving him alive last has not been a problem before. Once you reach that point, you're done. You're fine. You'll be you'll be perfectly fine. But 2.0 released a little bit of an aggro change so that enemies are more likely to attack you uh, than it was before. That flame striker, I have dropped my energy shield by about two and a half thousand. I have about eight thousand energy shield left, even with Val Discipline and Feeble or TC, whatever you want to use. That flame striker will one or if you're really lucky, two shot you. That's it, and they will. He will go for you at some point. So even if you make it, you will most likely die. So that's the biggest problem with the fight. And then that series all about execution, really. I'm surprised, like uh, it hasn't been done before. I mean. Are you sure, like 100% sure, you're the first to do it in hardcore? I mean, in not, the end, it's, it's like not the first, first. Oh, you did it in software. Okay, okay. There's I thought you did it in hardcore. Die. You will die. That's just it. You will die. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's more or less uh, extreme RNG Quite if you're going to make a deathless run. That's so hard to do. Yeah. I mean, props to you then. I thought it was hardcore. I was like, damn, he leveled up that many times? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Hell no. I actually got myself a plus one level of uh, shavs to reduce the risk of dying versus the trio boss. Uh, it didn't help. <laughs> it didn't help. <laughs> so, um, but after that, I actually moved into making a niche builds, and we decided to go for um, this chaos converter. So basically, I'm playing with an Arctic Breath spell, <clears throat> um, using GMP for that and um, converting that damage to fire with the use of a pyre ring that converts 100% of your cold damage into fire and uh, then I'm using a consuming dark dagger which converts 75% of your fire damage into chaos and also infernal mantle which has its pros and cons, troll mantle as many of you guys you know uh, converting the remaining 25% into chaos um, so basically I, I have no freezing, I have no shocking, I have no ignition it's just pure chaos damage but the build is fun to play. It really is. All right. I'm not here to make fun of your build. Like you said, it's fun, and you asked your chat and everything. I would just like to have this discussion with four guys that have an idea of what's going on in this game. Or at least I'd like to think we do, okay? Okay. So, Consuming Dark, the dagger itself offers, what, 60% global crit, and how much spell damage? 50-ish? Uh, 50 to 60, I think. Yeah, okay, I so not very much spell damage, and that's the only damage stats it provides. And other than edgy poison when you hit with chaos damage. Yeah, that's almost not noticeable. Yeah, okay. So, you're giving up a normal weapon for a weapon that does way less damage overall. And you're putting on Infernal Mantle, which is potentially making you take more spell damage and or going blood magic at this point. Or something like that. Less I'm auras used. Reserving less. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> reserving less mana. So, overall, in your opinion, does is this chaos damage build worth your time. It is. I actually enjoyed playing this quite a lot. It was fun. It was different. And that's what I enjoyed with it. You can go uh, ham on those reflect maps. Yeah, I mean, I could go into a map with elemental equilibrium. I could go into a map with increased resistances. Uh, I could uh, not give a fuck about it. Re reflect. Doesn't matter at all. Just It's a complete noob-friendly uh, approach to casting for me as I've stepped away from doing only summoners to playing other builds as well. So this was a really nice step for me to uh, to just ignore everything I, I can ignore as a summoner, but still being a spellcaster. But you could increase your damage significantly by removing the chaos conversion and go, for example, like we talked about before, by going an avatar fire, cold to fire support gem and actually do it with a fire based damage on your cold spells. It would actually do more damage, and then you'd have to look into, from my point of view, look into some life steal instead and actually be careful with uh, both elemental equilibrium, fire resistance increasers but you'd be gaining more DPS because you can use a fire penetration for it as well. So there's a lot of different uh, approaches to how you can increase your DPS from this point, but that type of gearing and that type of playstyle would require higher currency input. I spent about two exalted in total. I bought the Consuming Dark for one exalted, one exalted for the rest of the gear, got lucky in the five link, and that's it. So it was a rather cheap approach for the build I played. Hmm. I can I can definitely see like some of the benefits. So yeah, you're trading off some damage on the daggers, you know, over what you could normally get pretty easily. You do get crit um, on this the chest piece, but yeah, it's with fire skills, is it? Yeah, so you don't yeah. actually get the crit at all. Yeah. It's plus one to fire skills, so you don't get anything there either, unless yeah. you use fire pen, which you don't use because you're using chaos damage. So yeah, exactly. question mark. I mean, I can see <laughs> why. <laughs> I can see why people like <laughs> <a modern laughs> 
Hmm? I can see why people like it because there's, you know, you have to deal with uh, re resistant mobs when you're playing a spellcaster. Obviously, penetration makes a big deal. Not as many mobs are cast resistance. Uh, and then you can run those reflect maps and those early equilibrium maps without any drawbacks. I, you know, I, I can see it. I can yeah, see it. EE is a good point. EE is a very good point. Mm -hmm. I still think with the current state of reflect and the weapon just doing mm -hmm. no damage. I don't yeah, know what I you mean, take, Carl. From my point of view, it's, oh, sorry, uh, I'm doing 75, 76 maps at the moment and it's working wonderfully. It's uh, Sometimes it can feel it's a little bit annoying. I spent uh, from Sunday, oh, sorry, from uh, Friday stream till tonight stream, I've met a total of five chaos resistance packs. And that's two days of streaming. I met five chaos resistance packs. I might be lucky, I don't know, but that's five packs that I've seen have chaos resistance. Uh, so it's, it's pretty sweet that way. But the point of being able to spend a low amount of currency to get a build doing higher level maps or mid-range maps where you can actually alk them and really don't give any care towards the EE or resistance increasers, it's pretty sweet in my opinion. I actually enjoy that freedom. But if I wanted to upgrade the build, I could do so with more currency, and then I would never do chaos damage. But it is a low budget, uh, new friendly build approach, and I liked it. I and was wrong. Support. Infernal Mantle does add crit globally, so I was wrong there. Yeah, the crit is global, yeah. Um, I actually felt that with the double dip, so to say, where you can scale from both element, oh, quadruple dip, dip I'd say. Uh, you can scale from both spell, elemental, fire, and cold damage. And chaos, so there's five different ways of uh, actually gaining damage. And if you want to be really picky, RT Breath can scale with area damage as well. So there's six different ways of gaining damage. So finding jewels for this build, super easy. Getting currency to purchase these jewels, super easy because the mixed... Um, mixed portions of damage on jewels are actually not that expensive uh, as I would have thought they were due to the Whispering Eyes um, getting more and more popular uh, with the Avatar Fireplay style. But um, it's more and more <laughs> low currency input to it and that's the whole point with it. It's just easy to play but scaling crit is potentially really good. I just felt that with the uh, with the market in Tempest right now it was easier to find a decent uh, spell damage shield which actually scale on damage for the um, going pure spell damage instead or going pure damage instead of crit was actually benefiting me with about at least a thousand on the tooltip DPS. This is not calculating conch effect, which is not shown on the tooltip. Honestly, if you're having fun, whatever. I was just, I, I just want to discuss, you know, what's, what's the potential buff to cast damage right now? It's, you know, poison arrow is godlike because it does godlike damage, but doing pure yep. chaos damage is just, it's fun and unique and different and someone might enjoy playing it, but... I honestly yep. want to make a build around. But you, you did it just to experiment with it and have fun with it, so props to there. Let's go on to the next build. So, Carb, what have you been doing up in uh, Path of Exile right now? Well, uh, obviously I've been racing. Uh, not as much as i done in the past. Uh, I got a slight burnout last season and didn't race for at least like a week and then just came back to get the 1K and uh, didn't really play for like two weeks the game at all. So now I've been a bit more casual. Doing, doing the races I like the most, and uh, that uh, suits my uh, schedule a bit better. And when I'm not racing, I'm uh, playing uh, expen like really, really expensive, hard to build and uh, good build. It's self-found uh, CI melee, um, and it's it's yeah. it's found <laughs> for mine, so you can't use uh, uh, life flasks or anything that really give you life or life reach or anything before your CI. And you have to kill Brutus when you like at CI. So that means like Shadow and Witch you level <laughs> to ten and get the CI and then you can go to Brutus. I think Sion is like fourteen. And if you choose to go Ranger, I think I can't remember the exact level but you would have to farm the upper prison a bit. And uh, I don't mule like the, there's only thing I can mule, and that's if you play a witch, you can mule a dual strike. Dual strike because it uh, forces you to use two weapons instead of a shield or a massive two hander, and uh, to make it a bit harder. And, uh, <laughs> On top of that, yeah. yeah. Uh, the first character I did, uh, I didn't mule anything, and the problem with witch is that you don't get any melee skill gems, so you unless you drop it. Uh, Gem, you are uh, in a kind of bad position, and it took me 30 minutes to kill uh, Brutus with default attack. <laughs> so you fisted Brutus to death with a CI witch? 
No, you can actually have a weapon, but I didn't have any skills, so it was just dual wielding. <laughs> Uh, ah, I've, I've been there, man. <laughs> I've been there. Yeah. I, mean, I, I know the the hopo challenge. Good luck uh, doing Mervel with the ads. Just saying. Yeah, Mervel's tough. Mervel's tough was, with I the was level uh, 19 naked herbo. I was level 19 and nine hours played before <laughs> I got past Mervel. I tried it like six times, but every time I got overrun by the 19 in ads. nine hours, bro. I'm 15 hours and I'm like a level 11. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you know, they're so good. <laughs> so you're doing this 100% self found. Have, what what level have you achieved? Uh, the first character died at normal Daresso. Uh, when he get when he gets the enrage, he just goes mad, and if you get hit, you probably die. Then I rerolled, and now I was uh, uh, allowed to mill the dual strike. Which made uh, Act One a lot faster, because which gets some less plus, uh, so you can actually kill something. And uh, <laughs> now I'm yesterday, I just killed uh, cruel Malakai, and I'm like level sixty three now. And Daresto in cruel is not fun. <laughs> I can mm. imagine that. <laughs> uh, he does a lot of damage. And doing this challenge has uh, taught me that smoke pine is uh, a really good uh, skill. Yeah. Yeah. In normal, I especially, actually. Get especially the, for the, melee the with thing, like, nothing going on. The only, <laughs> the only way to get hit on Daresso in normal was to leave a, a smoke mine somewhere in the middle, wait Daresso to do the mirror split, whatever. And it, usually after that, he charges you, and then he has two different. Uh, like combos. One of the is the big AOB cleave and then there's the like single target something. And when he has to do either of those, I have to get out of like uh, use the smoke mine, get behind him, he will hit like a couple times and then run out. This is the whole fight. How long did it take you to do this? I think the uh, Darius fight last I something like 30 minutes as well. Oh my god. It's, it's not really like <laughs> It's it's hard when he gets the the enrage. Then it's just like he goes ape shit and have a lot. I mean that, that's actually rough. slower than leveling as a classic summoner. <laughs> I'm just yeah. saying. <laughs> what? Oh my god! It's that's you and Ziggy bad. here. Like you know, all right. You know you love Path of Exile when you purposely torture yourself and call it fun. Like what the yeah. hell? <laughs> I, I can appreciate a good arbitrary challenge, man. Well done. <laughs> well done, Kav. I like it. Yeah. Going going, going for merciless Malakai. The I'm not gonna even go maps. I'm just gonna go, go ham and get like seventy five on dry leg. <laughs> I think Jeez. my XP per hour in uh, in uh, nor I mean cruel dry leg was like something like five million XP per hour. It was fast. It was fast. Yeah, <laughs> sounds good. Sounds good. And here I am talking to people about clear speed, and you guys are like. <laughs> Boss, clear speed. So lame. So lame, mate. <laughs> yeah, I, have, I think I have like one day and uh, ten hours played or something at the moment. Oh my goodness! It's <laughs> a pretty good effort, man. I, I I like the challenge. I had I hadn't heard about this this challenge, but I appreciate it. Nicely done. Yeah, I can actually. I have the I have the rules if if you want to see them. Like I I, I <laughs> actually I actually made a rules for myself so I can cheese too much. Ah yes, gotta make sure. No, gotta make sure I don't cheat. I kept mine pretty sure simple, can, so I don't really need to write it down. <laughs> Go <I> ahead. <laughs> Go ahead, man. Wow, well, didn't get banned. Nice. nice. Yes, not banned. Not banned, confirmed. I don't know how. <laughs> Me and CI Melee just don't get along. So anyways, um, here's what I've been up to of recent. Uh, I've been working on a couple different builds. I, I've gotten pretty bored of the builds i played with recent. I did like a Dual Striker Dagger build, and I was enjoying it. But it's like, there's only so many times you can play a build, you know, you just play it again in a different league, and you're like, you know what, I've done this a million times, I'm going to try something different. And that's what you do, Ziggy. I rarely, rarely see you see, play the same build again from league to league. Yeah. And I, I can appreciate that. So, this time I was like, you know, I've never really played an Iron Will build, and armor is super meta, let's try it out. And I wanted to go Blood Magic instead of RF, because I've done RF a bunch of times. 
So I'm doing the, the Dune Gubiari Iron Will setup. I have a six link. I'm not using the Dune. I thought about using Dune with uh, a corruption of a level 10 faster casting on it, but still it wouldn't give me as much damage as a six link. So I finally, I have five blues, one red on a pure armor chest piece, and it is beautiful. Never thought it would happen. Yeah, I was like that this morning. Oh, so <laughs> good. So good. So I'm actually really liking my spec right now. And uh, I'm Iron Will, Glacial Cascade. I just entered maps at level 65, which is really early, and I have uh, about 7k health, and it's beautiful. It is beautiful. And I still don't have constitution in the Scion wheel, so I'm, I'm like just entered that now, and I still have a bunch of life to get in the Duelist tree. I'll probably be sitting around like 10k health. I could do the whole uh, Dune Kubiari 5 link, Ghetto 5 link, with getting a corrupted level 10 faster casting and run Combs Heart, but I'm not using a fire damage spell, so I don't really think it'll be worth my time. But overall, it's it's a really tanky build, and the whole idea, like Gazzy said, you know, he's playing builds for fun. Mine's fun to a degree, but I have a goal of at least achieving high level content with it, just because it's stupid tanky. And the damage right now, I'm sitting at like like 25k DPS with a level 15 glacial cascade. So with a 20, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. I'm hoping for like 40k. Is like... Go ahead. I'm hoping for a 40k uh, DPS build. I will say Dune Kubiari. Uh, Moors did do that first, so. Um. <laughs> I, li I like that you said that, <laughs> really? that, uh, that yeah. your build has the intentions of going high level maps, ex assuming mine can't. <laughs> I mean, what was your health? Oh, uh, 7,000, but. Uh, wow. Yeah, I've reduced it. Like, from plus 2k was ES. Yeah, 2k right. was. Oh, that. Come on, come yeah. on. I had like only life and armor <laughs> counts. <laughs> None of this AS business. It is ES hybrid business. No, that's okay. Effective health is effective health. How are you how are you getting your ES back anyways? Well discipline. <laughs> Don't get hit. <laughs> Don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get it. Uh, <laughs> I'm a used to, I'm a used to, you know, I had frost walls, I could, you know, wall myself in, <laughs> wait for the energy shield to get back. <laughs> like, sit in my little box there before I can again. Create a little, little ice plate case of emotion for you to hide out in for a while. To be fair, mm -hmm. it actually worked really well with that boss of making everyone immune, immune around him. Yeah, what's the map called? Uh, not Canyon, um, whatever, uh, the Golem boss. No, oh, the goal. Yeah. 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 Anyways. <laughs> yep. What have you been up to, Ziggy? <clears throat> oh, in addition to my own uh, edgy, arbitrary challenge, uh, the you know the Gucci Hobo has been continuing with my self-found uniques only challenge. Fifteen hours in, still no unique. I can feel it though. We're getting close. I've started farming Brutus. Um, my my first Brutus kill was about thirty-five minutes. I did a world record, I'm claiming it now, if anyone wants to dispute me then go ahead, but I, I set a world record for naked uh, Templar uh, Brutus kill of 7 minutes and 3 seconds. I, uh, the strategy was to draw him into one of those little rooms and have him stand in the doorway and just punch him down there while the skeletons can't shoot at me, so it worked very nicely. Um, and then in addition to that on the uh, real side of the gameplay, I've also uh, been delving into the realm of Cast on Crypt. I've never uh, never played Castle and Crypt before. I was like, yeah, it looks flashy, but I didn't think it would be really for me. But man, Castle and Crypt is fun. It's so so visually satisfying. Um, and uh, I've been just kind of like experimenting with different subs since this is my first time kind of delving into a whole like area of builds. So I've been uh, playing Wands, uh, messing around with Barrage and Kinetic Blast. I just got uh, a uh, Kinetic Blast AoE setup and a, I, I bought a cast on crit supported uh, Val Corrupted Gloves, which allows you to run uh, a five link single target setup. So I've been testing some different things, tested some like knockback with Magma Orb uh, stuff in there, which actually works pretty damn well. Um, and it's uh, it's been really freaking fun, man. Just like clearing with cast on crit though is so satisfying. So uh, it's, yeah. Just, man, that feeling, that feeling, those constant spells spamming out. I imagine it feels a little bit like, um, I've been seeing people play, like, Vile Spark builds and stuff, where you just kind of run around the map and everything dies. I throw I out one, one kinetic blast and just, like, everything just channels for, like, 30 seconds and just run around. <laughs> and just spells spamming over it, killing everything. It's pretty satisfying. So, still have a fair bit of work to do on that. Things I want to try. 
Yeah, I haven't uh, haven't had too many problems with single target reflect, but I can see from the damage I've taken from it that reflect maps would be a no go. But uh, that's a, that's kind of an interesting point. I was kind of wanted to bring up earlier in relation to Gazzy's build, is that it's got me thinking a bit more about like the current reflect meta, which seems to be just that you just. You just make a character that can just only just survive single target reflect, and then you just don't do reflect maps. That's like, that's like so much easier just to be like, oh, it's, it's all right. I just won't do reflect maps, but I can like get as much damage as I want, and uh, as long as I have like, you know, castle damage taken, warlord's mark, I'm, I'm okay for single target. Just run like a sapphire flask, I'll be fine. So uh, that seems to be that seems to be the current reflect meta. I'm curious how you guys feel about like. The, the the state of the state of the reflect thing since the thorn flesh removal. Oh, I think reflect is like one of the biggest jokes. The only time it's really scary is like party play when you know you you deal a crap load of damage. You know, like Val burning arrow crit multi, and you you go up to like a bear or a golem in a six man party or four man party even. You could just kill yourself so easy on that. Even even in single target situations, if you just like one to zero the mob, you can die. But other than that, it's not really that much of an issue. I, I would be shocked if they didn't come out with another reflect type gimmick next league. Yeah, I'm expecting to see some other some other sort of reflect mechanic added. Mm. But uh, but I, I don't know. I'm like I'm like trying to figure out because I always this is the way I always viewed it. I always saw reflect as like a, a necessary evil. But now that it's been removed, I'm like, is it actually like a problem that reflect's not so bad? There's like a little bit to keep people in check with the single target reflect, and then reflect maps kind of like as an optional thing. But is it is it like too much of an issue? I don't know. I don't I'm think decided. solutions. That's what I like about PvE. There's always solutions to problems. Make a cast and crit chaos con da converter damage build. Problem <laughs> solved. I am using Arctic Breath Ice Spear at the moment. If I just go cold to fire and uh, whatever avatar, and then get consuming dark going, oh, <laughs> I'll yeah, yeah, switch yeah, to yeah, daggers. Yeah, but it has no crit or attack speed, guys. Please. <laughs> or a Zeno, uh, that doesn't matter. You just have to believe. Got to believe. <laughs> you know, you can just get Saffold's purities and uh, get Alchemist for that 13% uh, Sapphire and don't worry about it. Alright, new Easy rule mode, of the podcast, yeah. you cannot say the word chaos. Uh, conversion, <laughs> those two words are banned. Okay. <laughs> that carver's right though, it's pretty easy to, uh, especially like, as far as like, people like, you know, aren't you gonna need to go Vile Pact because you're playing Castle and Crate? I'm like, there's so many other things I could do before I needed to commit to Vile Pact. It's like, I'd rather just like, keep the region or, you know, run Blood Rage on some builds, um, before I take Vile Pact, you know, it's just like, sure, I can, I can get some, I can run a Purity, or I can use Octagama, or I can, you know, just run a Sapphire Flask, or something like that. There's so many other solutions that, uh, are good enough to cover like, the, you know, the piddly amount of Reflect Wing counter now. Honestly, it's cast and crit. I only played it in Nemesis and a little bit in Ambush Invasion. Um, it was crazy back then when people were like, "Oh, it's bad." And now you look at it like once people discovered how crazy Surgeon Flasks were, or hell, when you can put in like two of the same gem. You used to be able to put two in the same gem, and then they added a hidden cooldown when you used two of the same gem. I mean, that's when cast and crit was insanity, and people weren't even catching on to it then. And now it's mm. still pretty popular after receiving many nerfs. You know, before you would put in like what what were people doing like two firestorms or two of whatever two ek you had cyclone ekers back in nemesis there's a, yeah. a lot of cool builds <laughs> but not so much anymore i do love those surgeon flasks man just like constant constant flask up time on those things so good yep. i think it's op because it's a kind of fits the whole siri meta of people doing cast and curl while crit focus builds just to make sure that you can always make keep yourself an extreme high resistance because it's because the resistance flask uh, upping your uh, max resistance as well. I'm not a big fan of that uh, that availability because it kind of bottlenecks the amount of builds people do for the harder content such as the uh, hardest uh, Malachi or in what I'm referring mostly to is Uber tier for example. I just don't like how it's being bottlenecked because of the resistance requirements for those fights. And yeah, but that's kind of like the intention, like the design intention behind that fight was that this is like a resistance-based mechanics fight, and then the idea that they said before was that at some point they'll have like another, another alternative piece of content that will be different. Like it'll it'll require some other form of uh, survivability, so you know, maybe more physical based. But I mean, no survivability, especially when it comes to reflect, you can. Uh, I was going to mention that earlier as well. Uh, you can always go with a cast and crit poison damage build. You know, that would, that would always work, right? Poison. 
Cynosaurus. We can't see Zeno, so we don't know what I his reactions are. I think that's our cue to go on to the next segment. Let's talk about <laughs> the upcoming one-month race. We'll discuss the unique drop rate buffs in a bit, but I want to talk about that one-month race. Path of Exile is kind of... It's not that it's dead, but it's kind of slow right now. Yes, just to get it clear, because people are like, oh, dead game already. That's Path of Exile's natural state, is that <clears throat> people go ham, hey, man, they go hard, and then they then they burn out, or they need to take a break, and then they wait for the new piece of content that comes in a while, or the new league refresh. That's why we have challenge leagues and one-month races and race seasons and things like that. So, uh, yeah, most people are like, uh, you know, are chilling at the moment. Mm. Definitely. Chilling. Dead so, game. um, we got a one-month race coming up, and if you guys are fairly new to the game, let me explain how this works. It's one month, and it's a race. Okay. Um, during this, uh, last time we had a hybrid league, and what a hybrid league is, they combine the hardcore and softcore challenges together, and it says Wombo Combo, and you do it for a month, and we had some really interesting prizes. They gave away this red and blue, uh, Seraph skinned, uh, recolored Seraph skin MTX, which was the first time they've ever given out- It's awesome costumes per se mtx's for hmm. a race and the community absolutely loved it but we were so over bloodlines and torment and we were like blood but we did it because the rewards were great so this yeah um, i mean most of us went and did both hardcore and softcore and yes. heaps of people tried hardcore that had never done it before i loved earning both of those sets first time i've really kind of gotten into that kind of like just hunting challenges uh yeah that was awesome hope they did that again and what GGG is doing this time around is they're letting the community decide what we want for the one month race. So if you haven't uh, put your two cents into the forums or Reddit or wherever you can, um, they're, they're, uh, they're allowing us to choose a flashback type race, which was done after the previous one month. There was another one month of flashback. And what flashback is, is it's all these uh, league mods combined, you know, three days of ambush torment and bloodlines for example you know they just they just randomly or not randomly but they decide uh which leagues will all be combined together and yeah. during the weekend or something they'll combine all of them at one point in time where it's just complete chaos and of course this league we have two more to combine in there so for all sorts of perfect disor uh, perfect storm disasters waiting to happen I, I'm really excited, and you can vote, you can express to GGG if you want an MTX type reward, or some demigod rewards, or if you guys want flashback or hybrid, you can make up your decisions, you know, you, whatever you want, you can you can suggest to them. And I'm going to say what everyone's thinking, Zeno. why not both, my friend? Give us yeah. the hybrid with a rotating extra ch uh, challenge league modifier. Yeah, that sounds Do great. That's what we need. Done with that. And more yeah. than just one extra, like, do, what is it, uh, Tempest and whatever that, the uh, Warbands, put them together, but do, like, three or four at a time in conjunction with it. Not just one oh. extra mod. I'd like it a little bit more chaotic than just the two of them. Because if it's yeah. anarchy... Yeah. Yeah. everything at the same time and let everyone die on the first yes, turn. Yes, yes, let's all freaking die. I wanted to see that. If if they redo... This is, like, an important point that I wanted to bring up with the last one, actually. I was not exactly happy with how the flash last flashback went. Uh, I think the they need to make the first couple days really insane. That's, yeah, that's, I agree. It was they, they, it only stuff. got interesting like much later on. Uh, it, it like it ramped up, which was I think was the wrong approach. I think the first couple days need to be crazy with more regular rotation of mods. And the, the thing is, if they make the first two days crazy, usually that's you know the first three days you have all these pros just I'm level ninety. But now if it's insane, we won't see that as much. We're going to see a lot of people just dying nonstop. And that's more exciting. I would rather see that. Uh, no, no, you could especially make seven. like cruel and merciless particularly insane, whereas normal could be a little easier. So while you're, you know, you're more casual players who might be turned off by a particularly insane start of the league, they can just go through their normal price through normal. By the time they're finishing normal, where you know the really advanced players are usually finishing like cruel and merciless and so on. Those guys are, you know, getting wrecked in cruel and merciless while everyone else is, and then kind of like it equalizes the community a little bit by making the later parts of the content a little harder. That's what I'd like to see from one month. I think that'd How be really you, Carve? exciting. Carve, what would you like to see for the one month? Uh, I agree with uh, Ziggy. We should uh, start off with all the mods and make it insanely hard to see everyone <laughs> all of them, die. Yes. <laughs> and then, then slowly maybe uh, make it a bit easier so people can start uh, doing maps and not cry about dying all the time. <laughs> and uh, first they ask to make it hard, and then they die, and then they cry. That's that's how it usually goes, but. Yeah, make it hard. Make it make it uh, difficult. Like just just punish for every uh, mistake you do. 
that, that, I like that's it. how it should be. Yeah, yeah. Honest, honestly, there's nothing wrong with that at all. Uh, yeah, somebody's saying plant. We should get the plant one a month, and then then on top of the plant, uh, add all the uh, previous leaks. Yeah, plant, please. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see maybe how not, maybe not, not black magic, but everything else from the plant. Oh man, I would love to see how Etub fares if like they start off flashback league with like if we get a flashback one month, if how well he would do if it was just pure chaos the first three days. Him, Ooh. havoc, all the big boys, even you, Carve, you do pretty well in these the racing type scenario, the long race. I want to see how many of you guys die. <laughs> well, I always die times. on the first couple of days, so it doesn't really matter. So. Yeah, <laughs> it, it can be a vanilla race. I will die. Like, we might uh, survive the first day, but next day I either get so cocky that I just get wrecked, or server crashes, or instance crashes like did, in, did happen in Tempest, oh uh, sadly. But usually mm. it's just, uh, we get cocky and then we die. We go you hard know, the first days and then we just die. <coughs> That's how it goes. Since uh, Sino is uh, free to say... I, I've heard you say chaos a few times. I'm gonna go with the word uh, chaotic. chaotic. That's, that's how I want the yes. uh, the uh, one month to be. I want the <laughs> previous leagues and all the mods to be like twice as hard as they are. I want them to input all the race season mods in the rotations as well on the maps, like the blood okay. grip and There's all. There's so the many that would no. just like, <laughs> that would be uh... And I want alluring chests in maps. Like when you go in, you get these, uh, you know, Descent insane. Champion races. I want those type of chests in the maps as well. That would be <laughs> awesome. That'd be too much. Like, blamped as it is, is too much. <laughs> oh, wow. I want it to be purely chaotic. We've had a Ruckus League. Give us more. We want more of the chaos. We want to have as much shit as possible. It's going to be impossible to survive. <clears throat> That's what I want to see. I don't know about that far. Hold, hold your horses. <laughs> yeah, no way. Yeah, yeah famine. Yeah, to be honest, it would be nice. Like yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's so many. There is quite a few unfun race mechanics that I'd like to not see. So, <laughs> <laughs> stick with the challenge leagues. I think. Imagine, Personally, imagine if famine was introduced when um, before Malachi got nerfed. I got to go back to town and get my flask, guys. Oh wait. <laughs> Yeah, that's like, like go, go to another zone and farm class. <laughs> don't you see? How would you do that? Like, it must have been impossible. Not impossible. Like, bo there would be no Alienware laptops the first day. That's for damn sure. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly not. <laughs> so, if you guys don't know, participate. If you want to vote or express your, it's not really voting. You just express to GG what you would like to see. I think everyone, most of the community, I should say, really wants flashback over hybrid. It's just, we've seen these mods for the past three months. I'm tired of seeing them, unless they're in conjunction with something else. Then I'm cool. Yeah. Yeah. And then... You guys else? know what needs to be said in there. Both. Do it. And then MTXs. I, I think everyone wants the MTXs, right? Yeah. Um, smile. Mm -hmm. Bring us the MTX. It's so awesome. Yeah. When someone's like, where you get that the people thing? playing. Yeah. I don't want they, they GG want, to like, the ruin their business model okay. or anything, but... I do it on the indexes. <laughs> well, I mean, what's once yeah, every six months? Some, um, I, I think they should put some rare MTX that is like only available from doing this, but also sh shove in some extra points to because sometimes uh, when it comes to MTXs, I mean, I think I've had my Wrath Aura MTX in my uh, in my shop window since I purchased it and used it for like two months. It's been there for over a year. It's never been used, so it, it would be nice to have. Uh, points to purchase other things you can actually more or that you know you'll be using more skin transfers or um, helmets uh, skins and stuff like that instead of having a rare one you might use once and never see it again stash tabs we all want stash tabs stash tabs <laughs> stash tabs are good I need more I reckon like something that wouldn't uh, eat into their current offers too much something like you know how we've got the amulet slot from the um, supporter packs Mm. Make something for amulets, or just like some arbitrary glow. Yeah, you get a red glow if you're hardcore, or a blue glow if you're softcore. Um, mm. Just make like some amulet thing, because that doesn't get in the way of any of the things they actually sell. What they're doing right now, too, is the... Um, like, last time we got the Seraphim set, right? Just recolored. Yeah. They're, they've already spent the money on to do the art and all the stuff for that. All they have to do is That's just a good point. change the color. So it's, yeah. it is a very good business model for them, because... Like, whenever I wear my blue set or my red set, people are like, where'd you get that? I'm like, oh, I got it from 1-1 with race. I don't know if they'll do it again in the future. And people are like, damn, I really want that. So now it's an incentive 
you know, because it's a one-time only thing. So it's only for one month. It, it kind of disrupts your business model for something that lasts for a long time. And then they can it. always make it make it sellable a few months later. I mean, it didn't stop me from buying more armor. <laughs> I hate when companies do that, man. Like League of Legends, are like these skins are going away, never to be bought again. Next year, here they are again. Okay. You yeah. asked. <laughs> cash and grab, man. Screw I'm glad they haven't done. Hasn't done that yet. Yeah, I'm glad they and don't I hope do that. They don't ever do it. They say it. Well, when they say it, they're like, it's a one-time only thing. Like the fireworks when pay to win for fireworks. Remember that gimmick on April first? Yeah. You can pay yeah. to win. You use a fireworks as you won. Ha ha ha. They said it was a one-time only, and they were going to release fireworks again, but they said it was going to be bloody fireworks, so that way they were true to their limited edition one one time only. Yeah, yeah. I like that. I appreciate that. I, I like Amazon Size Schools. I Go think ahead. we all agree that we want a black uh, set from the Seraphim. Just That'd be pretty cool. Black. That'd be pretty damn cool. I like Unsung Cesspool's comment here. Uh, what about making an amulet MTX that shoots fireworks off when a killer boss? Oh! <laughs> That'd be sweet. Good. Or can, a reason cast on boss kill fireworks? Even more. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about the unique drop rate buffs. So if you guys are unaware, the tier 1 uniques, which we don't know, but they did say, they, I think they said Shavs and there was another one in there. Tier 1 and Tier 2, rare and super rare, I'm pretty sure, of Tier 1 and Tier 2, yes. so yeah. both yeah. top tiers. They're four times more common, they didn't disclose the drop rates. We know some of these uniques, like Lightning Coil, Shavs, Mjolnir, they did disclose that, but the, the, the tier rarity of uniques, we never really know. People can assume, people kind of make these little charts, but we really don't know the exact rarity of these uniques. And they are now four times more likely to drop. So, is this placebo? Is four times of nothing still nothing? What do you guys think? Have you noticed four times as many shafts and the economy's ruined? So, here's, here's what <laughs> happens with this. It's, um, yes, four times nothing is nothing if you're talking about finding it yourself. But it still means there's going to be four times as many in the economy, and that does have an impact. And uh, so far, it seems to have had an impact. It's a bit hard to tell because markets change in relation to a whole bunch of things. Less people playing and stuff like that as well also has an impact. But it seems like stuff's already more, more available. I think we'll notice the effects fully next league, though, as far as, like, price changes of high-end uniques. But uh, GGG said their intention was to make um, these sorts of builds that have high, these high-end items still, still expensive, and they're still going to be. But uh, a more a little more attainable, and it might move them into the realm of, uh, you know, your average player being more like, you know, if I if I work pretty hard for this, like I think I can actually, you know, I can actually make this build with, I can actually make this Mjolnir build or something like that. So uh, I, I I like I like this change. I Me think too. it doesn't make it too too common. I think four times nothing since I do, you know, four times nothing. <laughs> I think since I, mean, I do have a pretty low drop rate, seems seems pretty good. You still gonna ex get excited when you find a T1, whether it's four times more common or not. We don't know the exact drop rate, and I think that mm. the economy, yeah, the economy might take a hit for it, but that means we're gonna see more cool, creative builds with these things coming out, or more ideas that we might not have seen. And you know, the person who hasn't ever found an exalt since the beginning of the game might actually find a T1 unique instead. Yeah, no, I actually love the uh, the fact that they're buffing it up now, not only for. I mean, excluding the permanent lease, because they're getting completely hammered to shit with the prices, so they're completely crashing. And they've already crashed, like, more than 70% of their original value, and now they're going to crash another couple of That's percent. Crazy. But for the templates, uh, I really appreciate the fact that it will now be much easier for players to actually achieve the items, uh, because there will be four times as many on the market. Well, theoretically, because not everyone actually uses the PV trade or on the market or actually selling them, but they will be existing four times more in each league. Uh, so to say, and I think that's really, really attractive as it opens up for the uh, many more players to actually get these builds and play with them, and that hopefully will branch out and widen the range of um, of higher budget builds, so to say as well, which I'm really looking forward to see um, the market grow with, or the, sorry, the community grow with. What do you think, Carb? What do you think about these unique drop rate changes? Do you think it's been needed for a while, or are you happy about them? I'm actually really happy about uh, that they are they are uh, dropping more because in the past uh, you either have to be insane lucky to get something to sell so you can buy SARS, SAPs or something or you have to spend a lot of time and be a good trader to get all the exalts you need to make the build now it's a lot more easier to get the items you need to make your uh, a bit niche build or a strong build and uh, we should uh, 
see more builds in the future from people that ha didn't have access to the items uh, before. I really like the a change, even though I'm not gonna get any sounds st still, but someone else is going to, <laughs> and it's going to be cheaper for me. Yep. I found, I found <laughs> That's a Shavs it. before the change, I was pretty happy. I was even more happy because I found that Shavs, I was about ready to do, what was the name of that map? Coward's Trial, I found one in like a plateau, getting ready to do it up, and rises in my head out begging to come into maps with me, I'm like, nah man, and I was on my nose inclination, nah man. And I almost invited him to this, this map, and sure as shit, the boss dropped a Shavs, and he was raging, and I told him to piss off, and it was just good fun. <laughs> 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 that could have been his, did, but I, apparently that map was dropped. Did you sell it before the drop rate change, though, Zeno? I did, I did, but only for 10. They were going for 12x. I sold it for 10 because I wanted quick cash. But the Shavs went from 50 to about 15 to 10 exalts this league in Tempest. In last league, they were going for about 50-ish, 40 to 50. Well, not not exactly. Actually, they were selling for quite a lot less, but they really? were purchased by a, yeah, yeah. That and some insider info. They they got purchased by a select few people, and then risen up in the price at forty five, fifty exalted, and sold for flipping. So that's why the prices went so high for those tiers. Ah. That includes Mjolnir and Shabs. Well, I mean, that's just how economy works. So buy it out, yeah. sell it for higher. That's just standard economy one yeah. one. It makes Here's sense. A Here's another interesting point about this change that you know the, it could happen with the economy. I think especially in temp leagues, is that as these items become cheaper, the, in theory, because there's four times as many in the economy, uh, more people start using them. The builds get more exposure. They become more popular. They become high demand, and the prices go back up. So we don't always know. The economy can can go two ways. That things may get cheaper, and I think I I think I estimate like most of these high end uniques becoming like twenty ish percent cheaper or something like that. But um, you know, we, it may not. It may not, but it will mean that perhaps more people will still end up playing these builds, or they get more exposure at least. So I think either way, positive things are going to come of it. But uh, the economy not, might not react like exactly like you'd expect. It'll be interesting to see what happens next league, especially. Slightly off topic, with the change to Blood Rage and low life in general, I'm I understand why Shavs is going for the price it is, but I think if this is the only time I think I will ever say this. I think low life needs a buff. <laughs> A slight yeah, buff or I something. Mm. I like that. <laughs> Especially for attack for low life. That you should that you should say that that's, it's that's like nice. attack based moves, builds. Bold move. Attack yeah, based builds get wrecked for low life. They just get a couple extra they might get an extra reservation, that's about it. It's just weird. Yeah, that's that's the thing, right? I I, you know, low life, crown of irons, attack based builds, whatever. Uh, didn't play before because they were too good and too expensive. <laughs> and now, you know, that the items are more affordable, I'm like, eh, but not very good. Do I actually want to play it? Probably not. Yeah. So. Meanwhile, Summoner's <laughs> like, yes, 10 exalted shavs, I'll take that. <laughs> yeah, there's a couple things uh, low, for low life, and that's get more auras, and uh, then pay not human. That's pretty much it. Yeah. Pain attunement. So spellcasters are in a good spot. Summoners are in a good spot. Attack base is like, but my low life attack speed. <laughs> <laughs> Minion control, please. <sighs> That's that has nothing to do with shavs. <laughs> nothing to do with low life. Anyways, let's move on. All right. So carve. You've been playing the race.